Welcome to On the Fable. I'm Dorothy, and I'm here with a wonderful group of Christian women to discuss the issues of the day. Much like we did in the old days around the kitchen table when the kids were in school. The call in number is 646 595 4784. If you want to call in with a question or a prayer request, press 1 to raise your hand in the queue. Our contact email is on the table VC at hotmail.com. Now, we may not all agree all of the time, but isn't that half fun? Different perspectives coming from different experiences and learning from each other? Pull up a chair and join us on this most excellent adventure in the reality of Christianity. Let's just see what's on the table tonight. Well, good evening, everyone. Here we are again, finally. We're going to hit this topic. Yes. Ronnie and Pam are with me. Hi, Pam. Hi, Ronnie. Good Good evening. evening. Okay, before we start, we're going to let Pam start with uh, a prayer, and then since it's her insight, I'd like her to take the lead. But before that, I would just like to extend an invitation to any serious women out there who would like to participate in our discussion group. It's no big deal being on the air because it gets to the point where it's just like talking around the table. It really is. So get a hold of us if you want to come for one topic or all the topics. Just send us an email, please. Okay. And... Hopefully my voice is not too bad tonight. I am having some trouble breathing, so please forgive me. Pam, take it away, girl. Thank you. (laughs) Oh, Father, we just thank you for this opportunity of of discussing your word. Grant to us insights. Grant to us an open heart and open eyes. I'd ask, Father, that Lord, whoever you bring, Lord, that it will be a blessing to them what we discuss. I ask also, Father, that you'll just ease Dorothy's um, breathing right now in Jesus' name. And that uh, you remember the, the, the people that are listening, Lord, that are, are having health problems. That Lord, that even through this program, that you touch them because they've, they've tuned in. And I thank you, Father, for the opportunity to give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor in Jesus' precious name. Watch over as well this 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 uh, broadcast, Father, and keep anything away that would hinder your word going out tonight. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And Rob has joined us. Oh, welcome. Yay. <laughs> Yay, Rob is here. We're all here. We're all here. Uh, Dorothy. Yes. I, I told you there was a storm coming, and it's it's all dark outside. Uh huh. Yeah. So I don't know if it's just passing by, or and I don't like to be on the phone when it's snor- uh, when it's not. Snor- oh, you didn't tell me that. I'm on I'm on the phone all the when time it's when it's storm. So 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 th- this for that. I hope it passes me and it comes up your way. <laughs> you such a me. It will because you know things that comes out, it comes up through Jersey and up the coast. So I'm sure I'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I'd like to thank you, Pam. I want to thank you for for um, 
suggesting this topic because I learned so much that I I was just overflowing. I was telling everybody. So thank you very much. This was a great idea. It is idea. interesting. It is it's interesting. Very it? interesting. Our Lord is so awesome. He's so awesome. I just I was just well, I just was blown away by all of this. I just I don't even have words to describe how what a blessing this was to me and to my husband <laughs> um and to my daughters and um so, so thank you. That's really all I I wanted to say was thank you. <laughs> I go on and on, but it was just great. It was just a great study. Yeah. And I just I just want to let everyone know that the show notes are on the forum uh, in a special thread for show notes for On the Table. Ronnie did that. Thank you, Ronnie. Oh, oh, it was so awesome that everyone has to know this. So this was just great. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> well, I know when, I first, when it first popped into my mind um, about it was the word preparation. And I don't think it's it's just preparation for um, the, the time when Jesus comes. I think it's being continuously prepared, always being prepared and always being alert. And uh, one of the things yeah. uh, that stuck out to me today was I'd, I'd got an email from Nehemia Gordon and um, Ennis, um, he does a... Uh, um, yeah, prophetic pearls. And what what he does, he, the, he goes into the uh, Hebrew meanings, and uh, he was sharing um, uh, Isaiah 66. So I want to listen to half of it, you know, because, I mean, I've been that busy the last few weeks, but uh, I listened to half of it, and, and I, just just listening to half of it and, and the Hebrew understanding of it, um, and uh, you know with what it says, the content of it, and I thought, well, this is another way that that, that really ties in with um, with uh, you know the the parable of the virgins in a way, mm-hmm. because it, it's talking about attitude, and not only when I suggested this, I thought it tied in 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 line very neatly with uh, the last two or three programs that Stuart and Larry's been doing. It seemed to be it seems to be coming up all the time um about being prepared and being ready. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's I think it's I think it's really interesting in, in, in the way it's not what you would expect you know, when you first read through it that, that I've been getting, because, I mean, the whole point of it was, is what do we get out of it? You mm-hmm. know, what does it say to you? And uh, it, it is a it is an interesting um, study, and it does go, sort of, bounces back from New Testament to Old Testament and back again. And it, the word always confirms itself. You yeah. know, and you yeah. know, because, I mean, even in the notes that I sent, um, let me just get it up. Um, he, he does go into, on one of them, he does go into uh, uh, about Noah. The people weren't ready and they, made, they mocked Noah. And on the day, without no warning, the Lord told Noah to go into the ark and God shut the door. Not Noah, God shut it. The time was up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I always used to say, you know, you can can you imagine... Um, you know, the people outside banging on the ark saying, let us in, let us in. You know, it was too late. And um, then you've got the, um, what we just, I think we discussed it about two men in a field and two women grinding uh, grain, you know, one will be left and one will be taken. And uh, we all need to be alert and prepared and we all need to have his eyes open uh, for what's happening around the world. But there's so much mockery going on. There's so much scorn going on. 
But, you know, those who are of the Lord will prepare. You know, um, the mockers and the scoffers, they will be outside the boat. They will be, they will be um, outside the safety. And, um, you know, it won't be until, um, you know, that the, the Lord comes that they'll realize what a huge mistake they made. I've lost well, you. I agree with everything you said. Um, that was Matthew, what, 24, 36 that you're referencing? 20, 25. Uh, let's see. Let's have a look at 24, But about 36. that day or hour, no one knows. Yeah, yeah. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Yeah. So, um, that's controversial scripture. I I don't know if we want to talk. I don't I don't know if I should say anything. That's controversial scripture. I know a lot of people take that to mean like the pre-tribbers will take that to mean they're going to be raptured. There'll be two mm-hmm. two women and. Um, and, and one will be taken and one the other will be left behind, which started that whole series of books. But I truly yeah. believe that that means um, the ones left behind are the ones we want to be. I I don't think that because, um, because let me just bring this up really quick. Oh. I think because the key word that, in that, those that are left behind working in the field, that is the key point in that verse, I believe. Well, so I, yeah. well, in Luke, in Luke, though, um, it says, well, I'm just going to cut it short, but it says two men will be in the field and one will be taken and the other will be left. And then they asked him, where, Lord? And he said to them, where the dead body is, there will be vultures or eagles to be gathered together. And I take that to mean that they're going to eat the the flesh, I think they're taken for judgment. And I just want to say, too, I also think that because um, because we're putting our opinions on the table, right, girls? So, so, That's um, why we're here, yes. Just, okay, so I'm just saying that also because um, in the past, like, like when Pam was talking about Noah and the ark, um, Noah, and the, Noah and his family stayed. It was the wicked that were taken and it's the same as in Sodom and Gomorrah they were taken and not Lot and his family well, well not Lot and his family so I always thought that that's what that meant um, does anyone do you agree or no or what do you think Dorothy I agree with you um, okay sorry I'm having trouble um and i think also i know sam one of the things that since i've been a christian a baby christian i've always been told make sure you have oil in your lamp make sure you have oil in your lamp and it's been one of those things back to my mind that i was always concerned about i want to be you know filled up with enough oil but you saw something different didn't you you and other people are starting to see the same thing. So can you share that part? Yeah, sure. Do you mean me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you said something about the ones without the oil are the, the Christians who never had any oil to be kin with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's coming back now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I probably thing. got you off off track. I'm sorry. No, uh, not really. Oh no, I don't i I'm I'm ready off track. Um <laughs> it's an age thing, I think. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah, the oil. Uh, I mean everybody said, you know, it's a, it's the Holy Spirit. And you know, Jesus said you must be born again. Mm-hmm. When you're born again, you're born of the spirit. So you've got oil in your lamp. You, you, your, the body is the lamp. The eye is the, the light. The body is the lamp, isn't it? Um, so it's the Holy Spirit in us. Um, it's an interesting thing, really. If I, if I could only remember where I've read things or where I've seen things or where I've heard things, you know. Um, but uh, there are Christians and there are Christians. 
and that there are Christians that are faithfully going to church, they're there at every meeting, that see no need to be born again. They don't even believe in it, which is uh, astonishing, because, because Jesus says you must be born again. But they believe the Christians, and to me, they are the ones without the oil. Yes. Yeah, you know, and, and they're the religious ones. Yeah, yeah, and then you've got the believers who have the spirit in them, who have the oil, because the oil is representative of the Holy Spirit. It's not that we've done anything spectacular, but what we've no. done is taken Jesus at His word and said, "Well." Yes. You know, we realise what a state we're in. Now, one of the scriptures that, that Nehemiah mentioned, again, if I can just remember it, was um, about the um, or oh, the uh, the Pharisee and the tax collector who were praying in church in synagogue, and the mm-hmm. tax collector says. Oh, I'm so glad, oh Lord, that, you know, uh, that I'm not like other, you've not, you know, I'm not like other people. I do this and I do that and I give me money and I do all this and I'm not like these sinners around here and that tax collector there. And the tax collector who knew, because in, in them days, the tax collector was very much like today, really, when you think about it. It was anathema to the people. And uh, he stood at the back and he didn't even look up and he says, God be merciful to me, a sinner. He knew what he was. He knew what he was. And Jesus <laughs> said, that man, not the Pharisee, that man will be, will be uh, acknowledged, whereas the other man's prayer won't even be accepted. So you can see the difference even in that story. Yeah. And Jesus does discuss yeah. that one. So yeah, That's good. That's a good story. Yeah, so that's a good comparison. Again, yeah, yeah, that's why I think um, I'll have to send you a link for Nehemiah. That uh, Isaiah sixty six is a very good, a very good chapter on on um, on the uh, you know what God sees and what we see, you know what religious mm. people see and what God sees and what He says about it, you know mm-hmm. so. And and we're in, in, in verse four, because um, it, it was in verse three. It was talking about. Um, uh, well, it, I'll say it, it starts off where it says, "My, thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house would you build for me? And what can kind can be my resting place for all these things my hand has made? So all these things are coming to be in by and for me." says the Lord, but this is the man to whom I will look and have regard. He who is humble and of a broken or wounded spirit no trembles at my word and reveres my commands. The acts of the hypocrites worship are as abominable, uh, are as abominable to God as if they were offered to idols. And he goes on about the sacrifices. Mm-hmm. He says, you know, he says, but I, I did, I'm not interested in that. That's not going to get you right with me. All them sacrifices because they thought that's it. It's going to make us right with God. And it didn't. He mm-hmm. said, no, that's not going to work. Mm-hmm. And in verse 4, he says, so mm-hmm. I also right. will choose their delusions and mockings, uh, their calamities and afflictions, and I will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not listen or obey. But they did what was evil in my sight and chose that which I did not delight. I mean, you've got to read it and you can see, you can see the difference between what what men understand and what God says. God looks on the heart, men looks on the outside. Yeah. Well, if we do this, I mean, they'd go to synagogue and they'd do all the, the, you know, they'd do all the sacrifices and pay out for the doves and and everything. And then they'd leave and carry on as normal. Well, that's the picture of the church today. They go to church and do all the churchy things, and then go home and carry on as normal. You know, good wait work till next like Sunday. Yeah. 
I thought I thought it were I thought yeah. it were amazing. I so agree. I'm looking forward to listening to the rest of it. <laughs> that sounds interesting. I, I would like um, I would like to see that. Yeah. If you don't mind. Well, it's, a, that it's an MP3. It's an MP3, so I mean, I can actually send it through uh, my files. Um, but it is, it is very good. But you see that when, when, when we, when we read on about all, 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 um, I've, I've made some notes somewhere, you know, and I haven't a clue where I put them. <laughs> um, I'm in chaos here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've been I've been gardening, you see, for the last two weeks, and we've got um oh I don't know what's the latest storm is it Goethe or something I don't know it's going to get windy anyway <laughs> oh that's all I put but I've done more than that ten virgins Noah as in the days of Noah unprepared ignored scoff warning still door was shut <laughs> well that's me done. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, that's a pricey, really. But as I say, I, I thought it were it were really speaking loudly and being prepared, and and making sure you're prepared, and 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 the clues are there for those with ears to hear. Um, and we're, it's we're an easily terrible, yeah. Yeah, it's very yeah. interesting. I mean, you know, there are things that were brought out, like um, to me, um, that I'd never really thought about before. Like um, in where it says, "And at midnight there was a cry made: Behold, the bridegroom cometh; go out and meet him." And yeah. I just noticed it's at midnight, so this is in the end time. It's midnight. Mm-hmm. It's very dark, and it's very dark. Doesn't. It's just very dark in the land, which I think we're we're very much going that way. Um, I think I think and, we've got there. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I'm I'm sure we can get darker, but you know, and and the virgins that didn't have oil in their lamp were asking for the virgins that did to give it to them. They said no, and we might not have enough, so they went out to buy to yeah. buy the oil. And I don't know, you know, just the thought of in the end times, we're supposed to have a mark to buy. I, yeah. It just all kind of came together in a way that I'd never thought of before until I did yeah. this study. So um, I I always just assumed that it meant, um, you know, to have the Holy Spirit and, and that our light would shine Um um, but I was I was wrong. I, I learned a lot. Mm. I learned a lot. Well, know. I mean, because it, it tell it tells us uh, it tells us about that. Uh, let me have a, let me find out. Um, you know where 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 you've got to keep the wick cleaned. You know, because mm-hmm. if you don't keep the wick cleaned on the lamp, mm-hmm. the soot will mm-hmm. build up and the light won't be mm-hmm. as bright. You know, so. Uh-huh. We're washed clean we're by the water of the word. And it's as we read it and as we learn that we can see things that um, are going wrong in our lives, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and to put it right. And that's like cleaning the wick. Yeah. There's also a saying uh-huh. that we've got over here saying, you know, you'll get on my wick. You know, when somebody annoys you, you know, you'll get on Wait, my what wick. Is, what is the saying? What is the saying? Um, you know, when some when somebody starts annoying you, you know, you just say, "Oh, you'll get on my wick," you know. Oh, <laughs> I like that. You're mucking my wick up you because it's annoying me. <laughs> it's like yeah. a patient. That's good. Uh, I think it's an old Yorkshire saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm like a bit that. stuffed up tonight. <laughs> Um, yeah, I haven't I haven't heard that saying and, and I like a good turn of phrase. Just ask Ronnie. Yeah. I like well, that. I'll, 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 just, like that. Uh, 
I once got a word for oh it was first pastor to first church I went to when um when when I was born again when I had my, my experience. And uh it was something I'd been reading and then I'd read you know, about Jesus on cross and and, and um they gave him on a, a gall to drink. It were on a um, sponge, and it were like wine that were had gone vinegary. And they gave him that mm-hmm. to drink on a, on a spear on a sponge type of thing, you know. Yeah. And something that comes to me about it, that I, I just said, you know, Pastor, I says, how many times do we gall the Lord? By 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 things we say or we do that really offends him. Yeah. You know we, we you know the same we say you've got some gall to say that. You know, and and uh-huh. it's it's like uh, it's bitter to taste. It's yeah. offensive. Yes. Yeah. You know and. Uh, he just looked at me, mind you, then, at, at that particular time. He used to say, come on, Pam, you must have got something. Stand up and share it. Now I was dead. <laughs> so I read something funny this week. Come to the front and share it. Now halfway down, the Holy Spirit had changed it. And it would be something totally different, you know. So I was used to just sharing things with him like that. And I thought that was... That was... Um, something that stood out to me and again it's it's unless the Lord shows us and the word is a two edged sword and and it divides uh, soul and marrow and and what it does it it it, it, it separates that which is of the emotion and, and, and that which is of the spirit so that we know the difference. We might convince ourselves, oh this is this is right, this is of God, and then a word will come up that we read or that we hear or we're given, um, mm-hmm. you know, and it'll actually cut right down to bone, and, and it'll say, oh, you know, it'll be an the attitude. The Holy Spirit convicts us, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, this is, yeah. again, this is cleaning the wick to make sure the light shines. This is all yeah. part of it. But you see, you can't know this without the Holy Spirit. No. And if, if you don't, when you're cleaning the wick, you actually have to cut away the spirit yes. areas. Because what will happen is it'll start spewing forth soot. Yes. Instead of, you know, just clean, pure light. Because I yeah. use kerosene lamps all the time. And, yeah. uh so imagine that cutting away the soot that brings some things to yeah. mind. And it smells as well while while the soot's on. Yes. It smells. And once you cut it, it's a clean light. And did you know that wick also means twisted? I did not know that. Yeah, it means twisted. I was just staring at this word in verse 26 in Matthew 25. And it were on about the, the talents. And uh, one, at, one at servants had buried his. And uh, in verse 26 it says, But his master, master answered him, You wicked and lazy and idle servant. Wicked, you see, twisted. Oh. Hmm. I do lots of crosswords, so I find out a lot of meanings to different oh, things. Oh, you know? I did not know that. Yeah. Thank it you. really, it really is I learn a lot from you, Van. Yeah, that is very <laughs> interesting. I did not ever put that together, but that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, wicked is huh. twisted. It's, um, it's like, you know, huh. when we, when 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 Adam sinned, he fell. He fell short of what he was created to be initially. Mm-hmm. And when yeah. he sinned, he fell short. So because he got cut off from God by the Spirit, God didn't desert him. He was still there for him. Otherwise, he wouldn't mm-hmm. have given him. 
Bless. So is it, uh, let me have a look. Let me let me get that back to the beginning. I think it's because it was something that stuck out to me the other the other week. Um, it gave him. Uh, um, everybody says we were, were like close to where God gave him close to where because he realised. Uh, here we are. Let's have a look. <laughs> Uh, after that, he said. All right, we are. In verse 21 in Genesis chapter 3. Uh, the man called... Uh, 20. The man called his, wa- his wife's name Eve, life spring, because she was the mother of all the living. For Adam also, and for his wife, Adam means and God. I think it's and God. Ad am. Because I am... Is God add am so it's add another one. It's like in God's image. That's right. That's where I found anyway. And for his wife, the Lord God made long coats, tunics of skins, and clawed them. See, that's when he became flesh. So I believe before he <laughs> fell, he was in the glory of God because he could walk with God. Then when he fell, God had to give him long coats or tunics of skins and clothed them so that's when it became in the flesh that's what I keep saying that's what I keep saying and no nope, yep. this is the first time so glad you said that well that's 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 it you see yeah. it says so yeah but it depends on the translations I mean this one is uh let me have a look I know it's the Holy Bible. Come on, I want the other one bit. I want the other bit. <laughs> Amplified. That's it, the Amplified. I mean, I've got several ones around me, but I've just got this one to hand. Uh, but it depends on which one that you actually read from. I mean, you're always better sort of going through Hebrew meanings, but it makes sense that when it uh, I mean, one I think I read somewhere where it said he gave him animal skins or, you know, s- something. And I thought, no, that, that can't be right, that. But it's just skins, and it's the word skin, and that's where he became flesh. Exactly. I, I yeah. Think, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Thank he couldn't, you. you can't walk with God unless you are oh. in that. In that uh, <laughs> exactly. You know, exactly. so obviously it, it, it makes sense. We would implode or explode yeah. in the flesh. Yeah. So thank you. I'm glad you said that. That that makes me feel so much better. <laughs> there. there. <laughs> well, it's just that it, it 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 only makes sense. And I have yeah. been explaining this. I, I I've been explaining this, and Dorothy's the only one that listens to me. But. It's the only way that it could be. Exactly. Exactly. See, he didn't trim his wick. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question, and I'm not trying to ask a stupid one. Um, because I, I kind of get it, but I don't. Um, it says in in Matthew twenty five eight. It says, and the foolish said to the wise, give us your oil, for our lamps are not going, wait, give us your oil, for our lamps are going out. Well, when, if the Holy Spirit is the oil in us, why are they asking someone for it? You can't buy it, you can't sell it. Yeah, that's right. I I think. I think that that just means they're envious of what real Christians have. Understood. That's I, what that's, I was thinking, but I wasn't sure, and I didn't want to ask a dumb question. That's what I question. took out of it. Oh, I'm glad okay. that I didn't give a dumb answer because I was kind of scared to give that, but that's what I took out of it. Um, that's what I take out of it. I think that people know. I do think some people know. I think that there's people that go along. I don't want to bash on a religion. Um, but 
there's people that go along and do religious things. And their days are filled with doing religious things. They have their practices and their rituals and their, um, you know, their rosary beads. <laughs> they're this, they're that. They, they go to church. They confess their sins. They, um, before man, they, um, but how full would their lamp be doing that? And I do believe that they uh, should so look people at other people are, and so they're filling their stuff up. I'm not saying all Catholics up. are not saved. I'm not saying no, that. No, 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 no. I don't believe that. But <laughs> um, some well, people want for, their rituals. Well, some it's for some reason, and I I think I I because yeah I, I I have underlined things that I did when I had my when I was doing preparing for battle. Now for some reason I put in quotation socialist. When I un- I underlined from eight all the way down to ten, and for some reason I must have come up with the idea that this was coming from a socialist mentality. Does that make sense? Oh, no, just as far as just, just just yeah, it, um, because it's so ritualistic. Um, it's it's what. People have done things for so long that they don't know why they do things. They just do it because the generation before them did it, and they did it before them, and they did it before them. So they figure yes. that that's what they're supposed to do. You understand? Yes, I totally understand. So, because they don't have the spirit of the Lord to show them, look, if if I didn't have the spirit of the Lord, to show me um, when I'm wrong, and or oh my goodness, I would when I would just would make a mess of things. I I just would make such a mess of things. So I don't know if it's socialistic. In what way? Um, I'll have to I'll I'll have to try and remember. For some reason, I put that there and. and I don't know why I did it. That was I think a lot that's interesting. Ago. I think that's interesting. I'd like to share something that happened to me. Um, the Lord sent me to a. Uh, I'm not going to go into details how He sent me there to a, a Methodist church. Uh, I mean, I kept going past it, and the Lord says, "I want you to go there." And I go past it. I like, "I want you to go there." And I thought, "Oh, here we go." I says, "Right, Lord." I says, uh, "I'll go." And eventually, I went. And uh-huh. I was helping out in um, Sunday school and youth group. And, you know, they used to do jumbo sales and I'd help out with them. And uh, they used to have a, uh, uh, you know, a Bible study group. And uh, the minister that was there at the time, he was from, it was from Africa. I can't remember if it was Nigeria or, or one of the other ones. But uh, anyway, he'd, he'd uh, done the, the translations of the of New Testament, the full translation of the New Testament out there. And um, John, who I were helping, he was the, the, the guy that more or less run the place, you know. Whatever job needed doing, John wore the cap. And um, in his daytime job, he was a school teacher. And so he was grateful that, you know, he'd got somebody in for helping. And um, so when when we started doing, uh, you know, a Bible study, oh, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I, I, I will, I'm one of these, you know, I just let the Lord lead, you know. I don't plan anything. I just let him lead. And um, he said, oh, oh, you know, uh, pastor, will, will, you know, minister will, will love you when he comes. And then, you know, he he come out with some things and I, I spoke up and just shared what the Lord gave me and he stopped coming, you know. And then they asked me to run Bible study group. Anyway, it went on like that. And then I were at one of the services and, and I'm sat there at the back and all of a sudden the Lord took me to the front in, in, in I, like, I don't know whether a daydream or what, I can't remember now. But he took me to the front 
and I'm stood up front with him because uh, he's done this several times in several places uh, where he sent me. And I'm stood up front and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, lad, there should be more people here. You know, why aren't they encouraging people to come in? Because it were an elderly uh, congregation and there weren't that many. And uh, they needed new blood. I mean, even John were telling me that. They wanted new blood in. Um, but you had to fit in. I mean, you've got the village mentality and then you've got this elderly congregation mentality. And, um, you know, the Lord says to me, he pointed to one man, he says, you see him? And I said, yeah. And he says, well, he comes because he, he, he gets to meet people, so he comes socially. And you see her there? And I said, yeah. He says, well, she comes because her family's always done it, and it's what they have to do. You know, it's expected of her. And he went, he went down the list like this, and he says, but they don't want change. They don't want change, because change means they've got to change, and they like the little social club. Anyway, mm-hmm. when I, 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 at the top of my stairs at home, I used to have, um, oh, is it Holman Hunt? Um, a picture of Holman Hunt with Christ at the door, with um, uh, at the door of a, a, a church, and he'd got a lamp in his hand, and he was knocking on the door. And uh, I was walking into the kitchen, and the Lord says, I want you to take that down to church. And I, I thought, every time I get something, I'll say, I want you to get away, you know, and here we go again. So I says, all right, I will, Lord. So I took it down to church, and I says, the Lord's told me to give you this. And John said, oh, that's very nice. And he hung it up just at, at side of the do- entrance to the little chapel. Well, what nobody realised was that that, fo- that picture represents Christ knocking on the door of the church. Not yes. people's hearts. He's knocking on the door of the church for the light to go in. And anyway, eventually, the, um, the Methodist church no longer stands. It's been knocked down. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's not there anymore. And everybody was scattered. And I think most of the elderly ones have gone now. So that place was done because they wouldn't have changed. They didn't want it. And this is what happens. So, yes, you're right. It is a social thing because it's yeah. what they've done and what they've carried on with familial traditions. And it's that. And Jesus does mention this. And he says, you and your traditions have made the word of God of non-effect, which mirrors in Isaiah 66, where he's saying, you're doing all this. You're not snoring it. You're doing all this. And it means nothing to me. It's an abomination to me. I look on mm-hmm. the art. I look on, on, on who you are, not what you do. I look at you because... He gave his life for us. And he knows we're not perfect. He knows we'll never get there on our own. That's why he came down. Mm-hmm. To take our place. To, to to pay the price. To bring us back into the place for which we were created for. But you see, they're stuck in these traditions. Doing them every week. Doing them every week. Doing them every week. Year in, year out. It's a social thing. Yeah. Well, I think I brought those scriptures up, Ross. Now I feel foolish because when I'm looking at them and being able to read them, I see why you wrote down socialist. Because they're saying, we don't have enough. Give give us yours. So, Mm. you know, so that's what I, I can understand that. Mm. Okay, good. So I'm not going that. (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm, I just had to be able to see it with my own eyes and read. I, I brought them up while Pam was talking, and I thought, oh, now I see it. Yeah, I can see. Well, it's not something well, that we can give them a part of. 
Well, what people don't understand, too, is that their their ritualisms aren't his, and, and he says he hates them. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, if people make a big deal and they want to, you know, um, um, you know, protect, um, you know, all the holidays and, and whatever, mm-hmm. but no one really ever dug into why we why people celebrate what they do, you know, like Easter, mm-hmm. that's, that's this part, it's oh, fertility, Ishtar. you know. I mean? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, Ishtar. and then there's that's a good one, isn't it? With, with right. our children. Yeah. <laughs> there's the so. birth of the moves, you know, in December, and, you know, it's just that this stuff has snuck in there and made it all bright and colorful and looks so innocent, um, but people, they, they don't ever figure out why they do what they do and they just keep doing it they don't know where it came from i mean i i wanted to know where all this was coming from you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so it's i i just like to dig like pam i mean you know i like to dig 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 and um because i want to know why i'm doing something am i doing something because he wants it or or is it you know just something that generations have done before us you know and Mm. they thought they they thought they were doing right because, you know, they're they're celebrating the birth of Christ. They're celebrating, you know, his resurrection. So to them, you know, they were doing the right thing. But, you know, there's a lot of idolism and and, and um, all kinds of stuff that people just, you know, and then when you bring it to their attention just to plant a seed, it's, they don't want to hear it. They, nope, nope, don't take their holidays away from them. Oh, no. <laughs> or Halloween. I don't know how Christians can justify in any way. And they have no Halloween. Clue. They have That's no so clue evil whatsoever. Oh, they all are evil, but that one's so out in your face evil that I just don't know how they how they mm-hmm. rationalize and, and, that. I've done so many shows, so many shows on where this all from. They, you know, when they say that trick or treat mm-hmm. thing, they have no idea what they uh-huh. are saying. You know, and then there's Paul Purpose. That's that's uh, the 29th, 30th, well. 31st of February or April. If you go back in dates and you look back years and years and years and years of those dates, and you've seen the things that have happened on the that's a high sacrificial day, very mm-hmm. high. But people just they don't you know they don't understand they don't they don't want to see you know where that stuff comes from and what it's for. It's like there's bales all over it. <laughs> so it's just you're trying to get them to understand, but it makes them feel good, you know. Sorry, I, I get all. I don't all know. I don't know what they. No, 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 no. I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with everything you said. I'm sure everyone here does. Uh-huh. I will say this is a good segue because there is customs that I really enjoyed learning about, and that was the Jewish wedding custom this week uh-huh. from Pam again. Thank you. Um, <laughs> those are beautiful. That's so beautiful, and it shows exactly our our wedding, our us, the bride of the Messiah is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Um, so, if anyone gets a chance, I put those down in the forum um, under the parable of the ten virgins. I put the Jewish wedding customs; they are a blessing. To learn and how it relates to us being the bride of Christ. So, just had to get plugged in because I I was just so um, I just was so blessed by that. But yeah, yeah, our our oh. our customs aren't so good, Ross. <laughs> <It's> just <laughs> Christmas, celebrating Christ's birthday, and you know the whole thing. Um. But there are people out there like Doug Woodward who um, 
who do truly celebrate for its meaning and and he likes to put up lights and he likes to do those things and you know and that's mm-hmm. that, that's him. you know that's good it's good for him i mean it's not you know bringing everything else out to 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 focus on that you know and and that's just what he likes to do um and there's a lot of christians that do that you get 12 days yeah. if you celebrate hanukkah I know, right? <laughs> Monday is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> when I saw my okay. kids that, they said, oh, I like that one. All <laughs> <know>, right. <laughs> but yeah, I wasn't trying to go off on a Roz rant. I just, it's just that there's just so much involved. And I mean, I don't know anything. I just, yeah, it just hurt. I don't know. I just don't understand why it's, it's how can some of us be and not not all of us. Mm-hmm. Well, there's some that want the truth, and there's some that don't. Even Jesus said that 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 right. um, you know the truth's not in them, and they won't come to the light because they don't want the truth. I know, but it's sad because it's a soul. It's, it, you know, it's, I don't know. I just go yeah. beyond that. I guess. I think I think for some people, I'm not saying that it's all people, but I think for some people, I think they've been let down so much by religion. I mean, I shot my son's uh, father-in-law. When he says, oh, religion causes a lot of wars, and he expected me, you know, getting on my eye horse, and I says, you're right. And he just looked at me, and I was like, we're right. <laughs> I <laughs> says, God hates religion, you know. <laughs> he and does. he just looked at me. Because his wife, I don't know about, um, you know him, but I know his wife and the kids were brought up in Catholic church. Um, but they never became practicing Catholics when they got older. And so when um, when uh, my daughter-in-law decided, oh, I'm going to have kid, kids baptized, I was stunned because it just weren't, they just didn't bother. So I, I felt that she'd probably had some influence. I wouldn't have chosen Catholic Church, but you know, I mean, God moves in mysterious ways. And Stephen used to tell priest, the things that he'd seen and learned growing up, um, you know, the, the things that have happened to us, that God's done for us, the, there's been some miracles, and, um, you know, it shocked the priest, but, um, and then he, the priest did something, insulted them, and that way, they've just not been nowhere near the church since, they've just, you know... They tried to take over the lives and they weren't having it. They were saying that when 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 my grandson were in choir, they were one of the top members of choir, and um, something happened and Paul and 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 my son pulled him out. Not Paul, my son, my other son pulled him out, and the priest just turned around and said, "It belongs to us." He says, "Oh no, he doesn't. He's my son, and he's not coming no more." And uh, that's when that's it. They turned completely away because of because of one man. And I thought that was such a, a shame. And I just turned around and said to him, Steve, don't ever blame God for what a man does. Don't ever blame God for what religion does. No. Nope. And a lot of people do that. They judge God by what that's religion. That's because the enemy's. That's because the enemy's saying it. It's God's fault. It's God's fault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think God a lot of people fault. just don't think. But they'll turn to another religion. It's it slave, ain't it? It's not God's fault. Mm. It's our fault. <laughs> I think sometimes, you know, we, we, when you when you grow in, it it's 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 better. I think, you know, just saying, yeah, that we're wrong. And now we've got all these on on. I'll say it on God Channel. There's a lot on God Channel. And I used to start that channel. 
but now there's a lot on God channel I would I don't wish we tried turning it on because we're leading people astray. Well, I don't get it. Well, it says in the last days there'll be wolves, there'll be false prophets, and they're certainly coming out of woodwork. And I've been actually stunned by some of them. They're coming out big time. Yeah. But that's what the Lord said he would do in the last days. He would reveal it all. That which has been done in secret will be brought out into open. And it's happening in religious realm. It's happening in political realm. It's happening all over the place. It's not people. They're killing people off to keep them quiet. But God's still bringing it out into open. Because he said he would. There's nowhere to hide. Oh. Even David said that. King David. Where will I go to flee from your spirit? They don't want to listen. They don't want to. They don't want to hear. Mhm. Says that in Second Timothy. Yeah. That's where they're. That's where they're. And you know, I wrote something called "Deception in the Church," and um, I should put it out on a little book just for people. And I mean, I wouldn't charge anybody for it, but um, I, I just wrote all about this stuff, and people are like, "Where are you getting this stuff from? It's it's unbiblical." Or <laughs> I'm like, really? I mean, I really dug into it too. I, I talked about how they just they're they're in their glass houses, it's where they feel safe. That's what we've been talking about the last twenty minutes. How religion has turned the has has just separated people. Religion causes division. Mhm. You didn't die up there on the cross for that. He loved it so much that he gave his son. But let me ask you a question for those who are listening. Well, it's not really a question. Because everybody thinks that this miraculous thing happens because of all the stories you hear from people. And maybe people do have these, you know, have these amazing experiences after they're born again. But um, I, I think you would be better off explaining it. But for those people out there who aren't born again and they don't know Christ, you know, could you explain to them the process and what they need to do after because it is a it is a continuous thing. I mean you don't just give your life to Father and then you just walk away, you know. It it, it really no, is a process. No, you don't. Yeah. For me, yeah. Uh, I got asked that at, at church, you know, when did you believe? And I said, well, I don't know the time when I didn't. So the difference is, before it was like I had a pen friend, but now he knocks on the door and, 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 and he talks to me and I can hear him. See, what it was before, I always believed and I always prayed. I mean, I, I, I weren't a churchgoer, although I weren't, I, weren't, I weren't sort of against it. I'd go now and again, but at the same time, I didn't have a thirst for it. I didn't have an hunger for it. I just talked to God. He was just there. I did it all my life. Teenage years, I'd talk to him about anything and everything. Boys, oh, I like him. What do you think, Lord? Careers, you know. He was just there. And I'd talk to him about family. But what happened was, it brought me to a place when my marriage were, 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 were falling apart. And I, 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 I didn't want to carry on. And, and the Lord... Uh, and the Lord showed me what would happen if I died. I said, well, I want to be where you are. And he showed me something that happened when I was about five, five, six. And um, nobody knew about it. Nobody, absolutely nobody. Only the Lord. Because we, we were in a, 
I think I've told, I think I've shared this before, but we were in like a gang, a group of kids, and the thing was to be to be the initiation for that group. You had to go in to this local shop. We are, everybody knew them. You had to go into this local shop, and you had to pinch a sweetie off a counter without paying for it, and show everybody when you got outside. I was about five or six, something like that. And I can see, I can see it now, sun shining and everything. And I was terrified, but I wanted to be part of gang. I wanted to play with him. I wanted to be with him, you know. So I, I think it was a, a chew, a penny chew, uh, or a halfpenny chew. I, I, I managed to get, and I went outside and I stood against the wall, and I, my heart was beating ten to a dozen, you know, and I was terrified. So I showed them, and of course I won at gang. Um, now, I'd forgotten all about that, but you know the Lord hadn't. He showed me that detail for detail. And he, and, he, and he, oh, I forgot which scripture it is now. And he says, you know, when, you, when you've committed one sin, you've committed them all. Mm-hmm. There's no distinction. And it says, thou shalt not steal. But when you've committed one sin, you've committed a lot. He just brought that one up for me that were pertinent to me. So I knew it were in because there was nobody about. Nobody. Not a soul. And um, so I started crying. I says, but I want to be with you. I says, Lord, I can't go back in time. I mean, I work, what, 33? I can't go back in time and put things right. I can't do that. So what do I do? You're going to have to do it. You're going to have to um, help me. and You're going to have to... Because I want to be where you are. And I, I threw myself on bed and I absolutely sobbed my heart out. And then all of a sudden, it was like somebody screw, unscrewed the top of my head. And it, the only thing I can describe it as was like warm honey being poured in. And it went from the top of my head to my toes and right out to my fingertips. And, and it filled me right up to the top. And I felt peace and I felt calm. And I knew it heard and I knew it answered. I was still, <laughs> you know, with crying. And it weren't until a few days later, uh, and I didn't even know what, what had happened. I had no idea. I hadn't been to church. Nobody had, nobody had witnessed to me and, and told me what was going off. This was a personal experience. It It wasn't something that I'd been brainwashed into thinking. It wasn't something someone had suggested. Um, Were you baptized in the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Is that what that was? Okay. That's when, the, yeah, I didn't even know what it okay. was. But, you okay. know, when I started talking to God, as I always did, mm-hmm. he answered me. And I was shocked. At this particular day, I, the boys had got um, wooden boot beds that just slotted mm-hmm. on, top ones just slotted in, and they were a bit wobbly because they were always jumping on them mm-hmm. and climbing. And I thought, I said, you know, I'm going to have to get something, a metal piece to to put on sides at legs just to hold them solid. And I just said, go down to Woodhouse to, um, to that hardware shop. That's a good idea. So I got in car and I went over. It was about four miles away it was. And um, as I'm going through, I says, oh, it's not where I thought it was. Go further around there onto that road. Mm-hmm. And I says, oh, it's the fishing shop. It's not there neither. Turn left here and just go to the bottom. You can turn round there. And I went down, and there was a street on left. And I saw it name at street. Well, I remember an old friend from Army Days moved onto that street. And we hadn't seen them because we didn't know where it was. And I went, oh. So I turned down that street and I couldn't remember address, but life of me, I remember it had a seven in. So I went down to the bottom, turned round and come back up. And he says, go and visit. Oh. And I, I, I just thought, oh, I'll stop outside this one, number 17, because I didn't know, you know, which one it was. And I knocked on the door and I don't know who almost shot me or Margaret when she opened the door. 
And it wasn't until then, because I'd heard they'd gone to church and everybody in, in, in regiment were really, you know, making fun of them. And I just stood up and said, well, you, got, you could all do your dose of it. You'll, it'll do you good. And they never argued. They never said no to front of me after that. And but what they didn't know was I prayed for them when they went to Iran. I dropped on my knees when they left and I said, Lord, please help. Please bring them back safely. Please take care of them. And they left. They were they were uh, act out because Shah were deposed while they were over there on a posting. So they all had emergency. In fact, Phil said that when he were cleaning office up because he were a clerk, he were on his hands and knees burning papers and shredding stuff, and there were bullets flying above his head in office. And um, so this was the first time we'd really seen them. Um, when when they come back and we got posted up to Sheffield, so uh, she, I went in and um, one of the girls were there and she went, oh hallelujah and all that. They am, and um, I could see Margaret were embarrassed and I just smiled. <laughs> she didn't know, she didn't realise I knew, you know. And she said, I'm sorry about that. She's a bit zealous, and I said it's okay, don't worry about it. And her uh, Bible brought to her, but she's you know. She, she was just about to shift it. She says, well, as you can see, because she always used to say to me in Germany, <laughs> she used to say, God's a crutch. Rubbish. It's all rubbish. God's a crutch. And as soon as she'd gone out in our flat and up to her own, I dropped on my knees and said, Lord, she, forgive her. She don't understand. You know, she really don't understand. And uh, so I think she was probably embarrassed after what she'd said, you know, and I said, well, I've known all about it. You know, I knew that y'all were going to church. I said, and to be honest, it's answered to my prayers. So God heard me prayers before I was born again. And he did answer. So what had happened was, I, I explained to her where it happened to me. And she showed me scriptures of what had happened to me and explained what had happened. And I was stunned. I was born again and I didn't even know. And it wasn't till a few days later that I realised that I were actually hearing God speak to me. You know, and I know people laugh at that when they say, oh, does he speak to you then? Well, yeah. Jesus said, my sheep know me and they hear my voice. And no other, no other voice will they follow. So I know I belong to him. I know I'm born again. Because I hear him. It's not an audible voice. It's Oh, I don't know. It's like in, in, in your in your spirit inside where you hear it. You know. And I I I mean I'm not he he tells me where I'm going wrong and I've got to put it right. He tells me he he tells me if I've upset somebody I've got to go and put it right. And I used to struggle with that until I learned that it's easier to follow him and obey him and do what he says rather than worry about what's going to happen if you do it. Because you get blessed every time when you do. So he's the one that helps me for keeping my wick trimmed. You know, which you wouldn't be aware of. Things that you do when you're born again, you wouldn't be aware of prior to that. You wouldn't think twice about doing that. You know, because you wouldn't have the conscience pricked. Whereas when you're born again, you can't carry on living like you do because your conscience is pricked. You know. And, and it's like you know and you know and your guts. Uh, you're wrong there. Oh, I ain't got to do that. Wow. Well, I think everybody that gone? <laughs> I must have like the hardest head because I, I just, wow. But I, I, no, well, I won't even go there. <laughs> I'm no, I'm no, I, I, you know, I'm always willing to come out and say my wrongs. That's for sure. But the problem is, is I beat myself up too much. If I tie my shoes the wrong yeah. way, I'm like, Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I beat myself up too, too much. But I don't think that we should do that. 
Because I no, always feel when I, I do that, I always tell the Lord I'm sorry because I feel like I'm taking away from what he did for me at the cross. Um, and it's not, it's condemnation. I start feeling and not the conviction because yeah. I start condemning myself. So, or so there, there is now so, therefore no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I have to right. learn that because I was doing exactly the same thing. And you know mm-hmm. what I do now? I just say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Like Paul realized, the Apostle Paul realized it. Mm-hmm. In me, there's no good thing. Praise God. Praise God. Thank, mm-hmm. thank, you know, Jesus has done it for us. He's made us acceptable. And he's yeah. the one, and the more we lean on mm-hmm. that love and we look to that love, the more we relax and let him change us. And it, it does it. We have to even realize in it. Because he doesn't yes. beat us. Yes. You see, religion holds you in fear and beats you down. Whereas mm-hmm. love says, come on, let's discuss it. Come on, we'll, we'll sort it. Come on. I'm the one that cleans mm-hmm. you up. Mm-hmm. I shall wash you white as snow, though your sins be scarlet. That, 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 that obvious. I will wash you white as snow. You see, when you are, when you are trying to do it right, when you're trying so hard to please God, that's when you're actually making it worse for yourself because you've put a burden on yourself. Jesus took that burden. He did it. Yes. He did it all. What you've got to do is rest in him. Rest in that finished work on that cross. Rest in him. And the more you rest in him, thank God you've done this, lad. I'm so glad you've done that for me. Yeah. Yes. You see, I think that all the no time then. because there's just no way I could do this without Christ. And what yeah. he did for me at the cross, there's yeah. no way. Yeah. Yeah. It's only because of what he's done that we're going to get anywhere. It's only because of what he's done that we can carry on. And he knows our weaknesses. He knows our failings. Yeah. I mean, I didn't come out with half of what Peter come out with, but did he condemn him? No. He put him straight, but he didn't condemn him. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So when you start resting and you start relaxing in God's presence and just saying, thank you, Lord, that you've done that for me. You've took it. You've took whatever it is. I mean, I went to the Lord once and he showed me again in a, in, in a, in a sort of a, a, a picture, a, a vision, or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. I just see it in his spirit. And I'm there, and I, of course, I've come under the spirit of condemnation. And there's only one who does that, you know, because before God and condemns. And and I'm feeling guilty about something, and I'm, oh, I'm not right, and, you know, I've done this, and I've done that, and, oh, you know, and, you know, you'll never make it, you'll never make it. You, you know that voice that comes that says, oh, you'll, you just, you're just not going to make it, and I'd go before the Lord, and he, he took me into this room, and there's, like, boxes all over the place, and he puts his hand up to open one of the boxes. No, 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 don't look in that box, Lord. Don't look in that box. Why? No, no. There was something in there I was ashamed of. No, that, don't, don't go in that box. Don't go in that. No, no. Why? What's in there? And eventually I'd have to tell him. And he opened the box and it was just full of light. And he went through each box one by one until that whole room that was one dark, once dark, was just full of boxes, were filled with light. He never condemns us. There is therefore no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. When we're born again, we're born into the body of Jesus. We are in him. And we are seated with him in heavenly places. We're already there in the spirit. We're already there. It's only his body that's down here on earth. We're already there. But the enemy comes along with condemnation. And the only way to shut him up, they overcame him by the word of their testimony. 
and the blood of lamb. The only way to shut him up is with a word. Jesus has done it all. If you've got any problem, go see him. There is now, now for no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I mean, you're living a life free. Why walk around with guilt? I would love to get that through to my ex. I would love to get that through. Because at the moment, he's, he's trying to make up for all the things he did in past. For the way he's treated us lot, you know. And he's trying to... He told me the other day, so I'm trying to make things up. I have to stop trying. You never will. You, you can't go back in time and make it up. You can't. But I can, there's only so much I can say to him. Because at the moment, as I say, he's become a fourth degree mason. So I've got to be very careful. But it's... it's what he's doing is piling more weight on his own shoulders because he's trying instead of relaxing. Stop trying. Just relax and just just enjoy God's presence. Enjoy being in family. Receive that love that he's got for us. Just soak it up because as we do, we, we, we set free and we, we're released, we, we receive inner healing, we, see, we, we receive so much more, we're walking around with them burdens. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. In the song, when we walk with the Lord, um, it's talking about... Oh, I can't remember now... Um, it's all about prayer. We have we have problems. Um, and why do we carry these burdens too heavy to bear? When all we should have done was take it to the Lord in prayer. I've forgotten the 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 name of it now. Well, sometimes it's just not. Sometimes people, you know, <laughs> carry baggage around the mountain for four years, I guess. Yeah, well, there has to come a time when you say, I'm, I'm either going to carry on carrying carrying this lot or just say, Lord, you did it all. What am I doing with it? Well, you it's don't choice, mean to. It? It's just... Yeah. No, oh, no. no you don't... Yeah. Well, that's yeah, just one of my that. flaws. It's a flaw. Yeah. I'm not afraid to say it. It's just one of mine. And I, I you know, and I think it comes from the abuse. I'm, I'm not, I am not using that as an excuse because I am not, No. Um, but I think it's like, you know, it's just, where am I good enough? You know what I mean? And I don't, who wants to think like that? Yeah. Somebody says you're beautiful and it's like, really? Because that's not what I say. You know, it, it, or or someone, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've had every compliment, compliment going, but I don't accept them now because I know what follows. So it's just, you know, I mean, I don't. Take it. I don't know. Mm. So I just, you know, and you know, it's, it, it's, you know, it's, it's. See, tomorrow's the anniversary of my husband's death, and you know, I'm just trying not to let the enemy pull me back to that day. You know, it's just it's not your fault. <laughs> I wasn't there. I. I you know, you just—I just don't want to go there. I, I gave it too much energy, and I don't want it to go there. Well, it's in the Lord's hands now, anyway. So exactly. So I mean, can't. Yeah. It's more to be celebrated. It's in the Lord's hands now, isn't it? There's a lot to celebrate. I'm here. My my yeah. Connor's here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Make it a day of celebration. Yeah, most definitely. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna yeah. thank you. <laughs> Cause you, you know, you, you've come a long way. So make it a day of celebration. Just, uh, I'm not gonna. That, that's what, that's what I'm gonna do, Sam. I'm gonna go out. You know, yeah. I'm gonna go out and get myself the biggest Sunday ever. Yeah. Talk <laughs> <laughs> about gonna tripping get weeks. Don't get on the lords. <laughs> weeks in your own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, Pam. You're awesome. 
That's what I'm going to do, too. <laughs> see, it's good to laugh. Why? Because it, we, we, one of the fruits of the Spirit is joy in the Lord. Amen. Joy. Not sorrow, not suffering. It's no. joy. No. Amen. I mean, if we're Thank called you. to suffer, if the Lord calls us to suffer, it will enable us. It will strengthen us. Amen. I mean, when I mean when when the Apostle Paul, <laughs> I felt so sorry for poor Silas when they'd gone preaching, and and Silas were his, his you know, his um, helper, and uh, they got beaten up and thrown in jail, and at midnight, you know, the poor things. I mean, you can imagine how Silas, how Silas were feeling when Paul turned around and says. Come on, we've got something to rejoice. Like, what? We've just got beaten and thrown into jail. You know, <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, come on, we've got something to celebrate. Come on, we'll start celebrating. We'll start praising God. We'll have a worship, time of worship, you know. And there they are in stocks, beaten to almost to a pulp, chucked in a dungeon. And Paul starts singing and saying, okay, an earthquake happened. When they started rejoicing, God stepped in, and an earthquake happened. And that, sat, and that jail, you can read it yourself in Acts, and that jail, the doors flew wide open. And, of course, the jailer, who was in control of the jail, was terrified for his life because he knew if any had escaped, the Romans would take his life. And when he went in to have a look, everybody was there. And Paul says, don't fear, come on in. And everybody were there because Paul were preaching to the, to, the, to the men in prison. When we start praising in adverse circumstances, we bring God into it because God inhabits, lives in, inhabits the praises of his people. And mir- miracles happen. Things happen. Yeah, yeah. Where things are shook. And it might not seem the right time that, you know, even when we're suffering, we can start praising God. We can start thanking Him. Because He's not left us. He's not deserted us or forsaken us. Because He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Forsake thee. Scriptures, yeah, these scriptures, I've had to repeat over and over and over again all these years to get me through the dark time. And I know the work. I know the real, and I know it's living word. And it's not because, again, it's not because somebody's, you know, rammed it down the throat, but they've experienced it. And we all know that experience speaks louder than words. Understood. We're trimming his wick. We're making sure that we've got... It says here... Um, in verse 4 of Matthew chapter 25, the wise took flasks of oil along with them, also with their lamps. The foolish ones didn't. They just used what were on rags. See, when we're getting flasks of oil, what we're doing is the more that we, we, we're filling up, we're filling up so that we've got spare to pour out. Understood. Yeah. And the Lord showed me again in, in, in another uh, vision was and I often see it when I see these water features and he showed me a, a, a bottle at the top filled with water pouring into the next one till it will fall pouring into the next one till it will fall pouring into the next one till it will fall all the way down and then it start again. When we are filled up, it's to pour out, to give out. Filled up, pour out, to give out. And the more we give out, the more we fill up. Understood. Yeah? Yeah. I think that, I think that you've explained it in a way I could not understand it before. Mm-hmm. Because, um, you know, you come up with your own synopsis and... But that is so much easier to get. I mean, 
just listening just like snapped. Okay, I totally get that now. Yeah. We can't keep it to ourselves. No, we have to share it. That's right. Once our eyes are open, we're to 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 um to share and not it even says that don't keep it yeah. to yourself. Mm-hmm. It says, it's given, given. And it shall be given unto you. Right. More blessed to give than to receive. And that's it's why, definitely. because the more you give, you know, the more the more you pour out, the more you'll be filled. You can't fill a full glass, can you? No. If you fill a full glass with water and you don't pour it out, that water's going to go stale. It's going to be undrinkable. But the more you give it out, the fresher it is, the more sparkling it is. And we have got a well of water within ourselves, within our, our spirit, that we can draw far from again and again and again. Jesus said, Lord, whoever's thirsty, come unto me and I will give you to drink. And you'll never thirst. Enough. He told that woman at, um, at the well of Samaria, See, this, that was a scripture, what the Lord gave me, for going on to radio. But I didn't know how to use that blog talk thing, so I never got on, so I did MP3s. And it was, he said to her, because she recognised who he was, and he says, well, go and, and, and tell others what God has done for you. And it said, go thou and be an evangelist, go thou and be a preacher, go thou and do this. No, he says, go and tell others what what God's done for you. Simple as that, and that's all I'm doing. Go and tell others what God has done for you. And that woman were alone at the well because she wasn't considered clean by the other villagers. She was probably one at local red light district, you know what I mean? So she weren't popular. But when she came face to face with Jesus, Wait, the red light district. <laughs> <laughs> well, red candle. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Red, red, candle, red candle district. Then <laughs> understood. <laughs> Lady of the night. I get it. I get um, it. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, God, it didn't turn her away. I mean, the disciples thought she was unclean because she was Samaritan. And it isn't until you go into history of that that you understand why they thought that, which is interesting uh, on its own. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because it were how they, how they worship, you know, Understood. what they brought into it. But um, he just simply turned around and said, go and tell others what God's done for you. And, uh, you know, it, it, it just said, it's interesting what, what conversation he had with her, actually, if you look it up. I'm not going to go into it. I'll let you give you some homework. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll report back to you next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, there's more to it with with with, with um, these virgins than than you realise. How it leads on from one thing to another. Mhm. It's all about attitude, preparation, and being ready. And we can't be ready if we've got if we've got something way, you know. Yeah, I understand. If we've got what? Soot. 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 The light won't Soot. shine as bright. Okay. Yeah, the light won't shine as bright, and we've got to keep the oil flowing. We've got to keep it. Um. It doesn't say extra virgin oil, does it? <laughs> it just says extra oil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll never look at that bottle again. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Extra virgin <laughs> oil. <laughs> oh, dear me. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. I've learned so that's much funny. from her tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're schooled. I think we're schooled in her, uh, in her uh, ways of her communication. I think we'd all make it if we went there. <laughs> Probably. Oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I understand. I understand what you're saying. 
I think uh, I think where is it? See the other the other thing in 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 this uh, uh, virgins uh, from verse ten to twelve. But while they were going away to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were prepared went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut, just like Noah. Mm-hmm. Later, mm-hmm. the other virgins also came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door to us. But he replied, I solemnly declare to you, I do not know you. I am not acquainted with you. That means they weren't in a living relationship with him. Right. You see? They did not have a relationship. No. He says, I don't know you. What do you what do you mm-hmm. say to strange? I don't know you. Mm-hmm. I'm not acquainted with you. Mm-hmm. The Bible talks about that a lot. God tells us that a lot in the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Um, in several different spots, they'll say, you know, to get away, I never knew you. Yeah. And they'll say, yeah. Lord, Lord, didn't we, you know, exercise demons? In your name and do this and that in your name, and he'll just say, I, I never knew you. Uh, yeah. So. Well, that's where, that's where they're over on the other page, isn't it, really? Um, where are we? What? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, well, this, uh, I mean, it goes on about that type of thing on, on uh, Matthew 25. Uh, so, 32, I'll say, uh, 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, his majesty and splendor, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people from one another as shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. And he will cause the sheep to stand at his right hand, but the goats at his left. (coughs) Excuse me. Then the king will say to those as it right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, you favoured of God, and appointed to eternal salvation. Inherit, receive as your own, the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you brought me together with yourselves, and welcomed and entertained and lodged me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me with help and ministering care. I was in prison and you came to see me. Then the just and upright will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when we did, did we see you a stranger and welcomed and entertained you and naked and clothed you? And when did we see you a sticker in prison and came to visit you? And the king will reply to them, I've lost my place, where are we? Yeah, da, da, da. Truly I tell you, insofar as you did it for one of the least in the estimation of men, of these my brethren, you did it for me. Mm-hmm. Then he will say to those at his left hand, Be gone from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I always think it homeless when I see this. I'm astonished at people, where people walk past them. Absolutely astonished. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me and entertain me. I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not visit me with help and ministering care. And they also in their turn will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry and thirsty? Or a stranger and naked or sick or in prison you did not minister to you? <coughs> Excuse me. And he will reply to them, Solemnly I declare to you, in so far as you fail to do it for the least, in the estimation of men of these, you fail to do it for me. Then they will go away into eternal punishment. <coughs> but those who are just and upright and in right standing with God into eternal life. One never knows because we don't know whom the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon, the Holy Spirit will Amen. flow 
any one of those people on on the streets in the highways and the byways because he talks about how earlier on how <coughs> he'd invited the church and to, oh well I've got this to do and oh, I've got my business to take care of uh, I'll be back later oh I've got my parents to bury I've got I'll be back later so the lad says right you're not coming to the feast go out into the highways and the byways and how many people on the streets homeless and in the highways and the byways whom the Lord doesn't call or doesn't touch I remember seeing one guy he were homeless and that I saw him uh, on bus and I saw him um, oh it went town I will meet to be friend <coughs> and it was like same guy there was something about him I just couldn't put my finger on it he's got the most wonderful blue eyes and I, I actually tell my friend I, I just uh, Margaret and I said I'm sure he's an angel him I'm sure of it and I don't know why but there was something and um, of course I had nothing then I didn't have anything I didn't have a penny to my name but I never forgot his face and I never got, forgot him and because uh, she, she we used to meet once a month in town and it was her to pay for um, the drink you know the, the cup of tea and that and uh, I wanted to run after him. I wanted to do something for him, you know. I just felt that tug. But I'd got nothing. I'd literally got nothing, you know. I had to wait Mr. Rub together. But, you know, it says, be careful how you entertain strangers. For some have entertained angels unawares. Mm-hmm. Deep silence. Well, that's because I'm listening to what you're saying. I mean, it's true. Mm-hmm. You see it on YouTube, don't you? You see a lot of it on YouTube. I and I sit here watching some of them, and I'm in tears. It just it just breaks my heart. It just breaks my heart. Because you know what it's like to starve. You know what it's like. You know what I mean. I uh, know, I've gone hungry. I know what it's like. Mm-hmm. But, the, you know, the walk past and... I want to, I, I'd love to jump in and just get older and shake them and say, are you blind? Are you so selfish? You can't see, you can't help. You just turn your face away. I mean, if I can see that, what's the Lord seeing? What's the Lord seeing? Oh, they should get up and get a job. Yeah, right. I'm sure they'd love to be on the street. I'm sure that's what their their ambition is to be on the streets. It's not showing love. It's showing judgment. Yeah. When I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger. And you brought me together with yourselves and welcomed, entertained and lodged me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me with help and ministering care. I was in prison and you came to see me. I mean, if you if you call to prison, work fine, you know, but um, you have to you have to pour it out where you are, where the Lord sends you, where you know where you are. Mhm. You know, and a lot of times it's within your family. It's in your own sphere of influence. Right. You know, I did when I when I um <clears throat> when I lived in California. I used to um, I used to like every I don't know. I think it was every other day I would go and take sandwiches, fruit, and juice <coughs> to the homeless. Mm-hmm. But you know, I met some really interesting people out there. Oh yeah. And and you don't sit there and ask them questions, and you don't ask them why this and why that. You just you just talk to them. And I never yeah. looked at them like they were home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because to yeah. me, they're just people. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the, like some of the, some of the guys I knew that, that I met out there, 
you know, I would say to them, I, I did say to a couple of them, hey, you know what, do you have a driver's license? And they'd say, hey, yeah, you know, and I was thinking, look, I know if if it's up your alley, I said, you know, if you drive it, if you can, if you think you can learn how to drive a truck, at least you would have a place to live. You can get on your feet. You, you know, you can walk. You know, you can do all that. And and it's not that they were, like, they they didn't come across to me as like alcoholics or anything like that. They were just down on their luck. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the one guy, and the one guy I was talking to. He said, it's funny you say that because I have a letter with me. I guess it was mailed to the where wherever he was staying. And um, it was from the company that I drove for. And I was like, wow, really? You know, I, I, said, I said, there you got you got two beds. You know, you, you, you can put a refrigerator and everything in there. You know, it, it just... I just felt led to say it. I, I wasn't trying to make him feel bad or anything. Yeah. You know, but, but you know, when I would hand out gospel, I, I would take my son with me, too, and say, you know, Connor, this is, this is, this is trouble that's, that's going on. And you know what? The police kicked him out, and I never yeah. found them again. I never found them again. And we were there for weeks, and then all of a sudden they were kicked out. Yeah. Well, they're coming out with new laws now, aren't they? Where it's becoming illegal where to feed yes. and to help yes. the homeless. Yes. I mean, I I did uh, read somewhere that in London, some of the shops were putting uh, um, where a lot of them used to sleep in front of window at night. They were putting metal studs in to stop them, uh, and there were quite an uproar about it. So I presume that they've removed them. But you see, where where we were at uh, that first church where the Lord sent me, um, uh, when when I started, you know, going to church <laughs> after I was born again, I asked him where to go, and uh, he sent me to the one place I would never have dreamed of going because I thought they were all mental, and he sent me to a Pentecostal church, and I said, "But they're all crazy, do you?" Mm-hmm. And I told Pastor, I told Pastor, and uh, he, he just absolutely roared with laughter. And it was because of an a experience I'd had at nine years old. I'd gone into a local Pentecostal church to watch a film, and they all started with with praising and 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 praying in tongues. And now we're out that door like lightning, scared the living daylights out of me. <laughs> and I was gone. I never went back. So they're all crazy in here. <laughs> So it was it, <laughs> ironic, really, that he sent me to a Pentecostal. But uh, round the corner from there was a homeless hostel. And, um, you know, even that has now shut down. Mm-hmm. So they're, 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 not, they're not helping homeless in any way, shape, no. or form. Yet they're bringing um, millions of flipping it. And, I mean, I'm not against immigrants. I'm not against the people. But when they can't handle what's already here, mm-hmm. it's wrong to bring in others. It's wrong to bring them in, in 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 the amounts that they're doing, because there isn't enough for the people that are already here. Do you know what I mean? Everybody thinks yeah. that we're being wrong in our attitude, but it, it's not. It's just sheer common sense. If you can't cope with what you've got, you've got already. Why bring more in? And they're just shutting these places down left, right, and centre. That's funny because I was going to a Pentecostal church when I was doing that. Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> you you were you were encouraged, weren't you? I think, oh I think yeah, you encouraged you. But I did it on my own. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I I did it on my own. I wanted yeah. to because I was so in love with the Lord. I mean, I I wanted to get up there and preach behind the pulpit. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was because that's, that's how you feel. You're just so gung ho. You want to do it all, but it, it's just that I, I am. I felt I was being led towards uh, being a watchman and warning, mm. um, like because there are not a lot of people that preach that downside. They they want to preach the uplifting part. And and what I say to people is there's there's more than one function to a body. Yeah. Some people are there to nurse. Some people are there to 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 encourage some people are there to do it yeah. you know what I mean I'm just the I'm yeah. I'm I'm you know I'm I'm the bearer of bad news I guess but 
you know, I say it with love, but it just it comes out that way. But yeah, people don't people don't respond to that. But when I went out there to them, I I I didn't I didn't do that. But it's yeah. just that it turned into that, and I'm like, oh no. Yeah. You know, I'm just why are you always preaching about doom and gloom? <laughs> But I'm not. Well, I'm just trying to warn you. <laughs> well, it's it's only doom and gloom if they look on the dark side. If the the, the for every, I mean, we we are living in a time where the Lord said this is going to happen. This is why you've got to be prepared, and this is the way. Once you're prepared, you've got something to look forward to. Well, sure. You know, <laughs> yeah, there's all this doom and gloom. And we could go on just like anybody else, but we're not. Why? Because we've got something to look forward to. Yeah. You see, we're not mm-hmm. sad and about. We might be, we might be frustrated and and angry with, with with things that are happening, but we're not sad because we've got. It's getting nearer to the time when it's coming back, and yeah. they don't realise just how near it is to that door getting closed. It could be weeks, it could be months away. We just you just don't know. But I mean everybody in the everybody in the body of Christ is feeling it. So no. So no. We're that generation. Yeah, we are. <clears throat> just there's just people that don't want to hear it because they want to stay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because they feel this See, is their life, this is their destination, and it's not, it's not it. Oh. I have not seen or uh, ear heard. Oh, I've forgotten the whole scripture now. Of what God's prepared for those who all, all love him. There's a better place. There's a better situation. Oh well, I mean Doug, Doug's book. I mean, you know, when you when you think about Doug's book, I mean that's that's the that's something to look forward to. You know, we what, what, what like he said, we, we 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 haven't really cottoned on to what what we've been prepared for. Uh-uh. I'm just gonna go. I'm just going to go and get a drink. So I've got a tickle in my throat. That's and so I'll let somebody else speak up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I've got a cat fur ball on one side. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment. Okay. Dorothy. Dorothy. Yep, I was just here. There you are. Just well, we're down to nine minutes. Yeah, I saw the clock. Just I was having such a great conversation with Pam. I know. <laughs> it's just it's just I I remember when I started preparing for battle and all the stuff that I learned and how people people would say, Roz, you're you're so unloving and you're you know what I mean and just it's like but but you can't just hear the good stuff all the time (laughs) no but you can't hear the bad stuff all the time either well no I didn't that's why I started having guests on my show (laughs) but you're right about the the body has different parts that do different things and different unctions yes and some people need to hear uh, the bad part because they need to be scared straight. But others need to hear the love. So, well, sure, that's the the nursing compassionate side. Of course, the, you have to have a balance. Yes. I learned that doing the show that I had to have a balance because it just kept it was just was going one sided. And and you know, it's like Roz, you got to balance. You got to balance. You know. And some of the things that others think are scary that are scriptural, once you have the truth, 
and you learn and you grow and you learn to rest in him, it's not as scary anymore. So. Yeah, no. It's, you just learn to accept it. Because you know he'll be with you through it. I love that yeah, scripture well. that says you can have 10,000 die to your left and 10,000 die to your right. You're right, yeah. And you're going to be just peachy keen. I just love that, you know. I get the feeling that's in Psalm somewhere. No. Yeah. Am I, yeah, what, is it in Psalms? Yeah, it is. I think it's oh, Psalm okay. 91. Might be a lot. That's, that's, yeah, it's close to it because uh, that's, Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah, that is it. That is it. Psalm 91. Never up. So you girls want to... Yes, it is. Do you, yeah. um, give out your final thoughts and conclusions? Don't go to the Red Light ready. District. <laughs> <laughs> Be ready. <laughs> Although they do say the red light bulb helps the wrinkles fade yeah. from view. So I don't know. <laughs> oh, I can't you said uh, that. I, I <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> I, I, I think I would say be ready, not just for the larger term, but be ready to give a word in due season to encourage and to... Help someone. Yeah. <laughs> You've tickled the funny keyboard, man. I was going to bed on a happy note. Oh, it's funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One half has to be practical, you know. What? Oh, so <laughs> I said one does have to be practical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dorothy. One does. That was funny. That was okay, so I'm going to let you girls... A good note to end on. <laughs> yeah, you got girls end up the show because I'm still having trouble breathing. So. Oh, okay. All right, I'm going to mute my phone now so I can yeah. cough loudly. Okay. Okay. Bless you. Oh, bless you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for this night. Thank you, Lord, for all the scriptures that you've shared with us, that you've revealed your art to us. Lord, I just pray that you'll open the eyes of the blind, remove the scales from their eyes that they might see, and uh, that you'll open the ears of the deaf and prepare the hearts of those whom you've chosen. Just pray again, Lord, that Lord, that you'll strengthen uh, Dorothy. Lord, she's, she's such a faithful daughter, and I just ask that, Lord, you'll just touch her tonight and, 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 and give her strength in her breathing and I just thank you for Ross and I thank you for Ronnie and I thank you for all, everybody else that's listening in may they be blessed and may they go forward with the joy of the Lord and may they know his peace Lord in Jesus name, Amen Amen, Amen. Alrighty girls um, see you next week Oh, yeah. That's good. Not definitely. I think of something to talk about. I'll send what you that. Something that I just won't laugh. Yeah. I'll send you that MP3 what did you anyway. Say? I said I'd say something, but I'm just, I, you know, I'm just trying to be silly. Oh, go ahead. That's okay. No, it had something to do with the red light district. Yeah, I just won't go there. Well, go ahead. <laughs> <'Cause I'm laughs> Never <there>. mind. <laughs> Pam just cracks me up for the stuff she comes out with. I know. <laughs> I know I was floored. I love her verbiage. It's awesome. Uh, I think it's funny. That's just me. Uh, I got two 
tears in my eyes when she said that. <laughs> She's funny. Oh, goodness. Well, it's been fun and it's been interesting. And I learned a yeah. lot, so I want to thank you again, Pam. Uh, yeah, thank you, Pam. Really. It was You'll enjoy it was the eyes. It was wonderful. Said. Yeah. What'd you say? You'll enjoy the Isaiah six, Isaiah sixty six then when I send yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, we're reading that. It really is good. Beautiful. It was just beautiful. Well, thank you. Alrighty, I'm gonna say good night. Good night. Good night, night everybody. Good boy. God bless. <laughs> <Bye-bye>. <laughs> good night, DC. <laughs> uh, good night, Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs>